So Google started with Gemini, then it got to Imogen, then it has that VO2, which I don't know if it's going to be good or not. I haven't even seen VO1, right? But now we have something different, which is called Google Whisk. And the main thing that they want to give us here is to prompt less and play more. Now, this is good for people out there who want to create content without getting too technical about it even though sometimes that can be a bad thing, and I'm going to talk about that later on. But as you can see, how this works is that you can simply put a subject here, and it can be your own picture, for example, some realistic picture of you, and then afterwards, you're going to choose a scene. The scene means basically the place where you want to position yourself in. So just some kind of a background, maybe a city, maybe a land, whatever, and the last thing that you should do is to choose a style. Now, the style can be anything, and they've got different styles inside of this one. So you don't have to imagine the styles. You don't have to prompt the styles. You can just choose from the drop-down menus. And, of course, this is going to be the end result. And if you're satisfied with it, you can just have it on your computer. Now, it's not available in all of the countries just yet, but this is how it's going to look like. You can, of course, add or edit details when you choose the style and when it gives you the end result, you can always change everything. And people do have a lot of success with it. As you can see, this person chose the realistic picture of themselves. In this particular case, it is important to not have anything behind yourself, to have a clean background. In this case, this person has a red background behind them. And then, of course, down there, you don't even have to choose a scene here. For example, this person didn't choose any scenes, but it chose a style, right? So this is a fluffy thing. So here's the result. It's really good, honestly. You can find this over at labs.google forward slash fx forward slash tools forward slash whisk. But as I've told you, it's not available in all the countries just yet. What I recommend is that you wait for it and then play with it as much as you can because the practice is going to make you perfect. And I'll tell you some of the niches, some of the ways in which you can make money with this. But before we move on, I want to tell you that this is not a get rich quick scheme. You can't get yourself millions of dollars and quit your nine to five job by just using Whisk, at least in the first few months. But the good thing is, well, social media, believe it or not, it's still on the rise, right? It's still growing. All of these platforms, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, they still need more and more traffic and they're coming for you. What do I mean for that? They're coming for every free second of your life right now because they want more attention. I don't know if you remember when Instagram was just out and you scrolled and scrolled and scrolled and at the bottom there was like, okay, you read or you saw all of the feed, you know, you're up to date. You can't see that anymore. They're just there to have you scroll and scroll. So how to fight against this? Well, don't use social media unless it is for content creation purposes, unless you do it for research purposes, right? You can do it, and anybody can create content nowadays. At least limit your social media usage, right? We waste a lot of time. It's true. I wasted a lot of time. I'm guilty of it, and half of the planet is. But the good thing is, you can create some kind of content, and you don't have to have thousands of followers in order to make side hustle out of this. I think that in a few years, Everybody should have a theme page, a YouTube channel, and that's just going to be some side income for ourselves, you know, to, yeah, to just help you live better. But please, please don't expect miracles. Those days are over unless you, like, dedicate yourself fully to it and you have some luck with it as well. And what's good there for you if you don't want to waste a lot of time, you know, Playing with prompts. As I said right here, we believe you shouldn't have to learn how to prompt to create images. It should be easy to try things out. And it's good, right? I like this. I like that even teenagers would be able to create some kind of content, fill out Instagram, YouTube, TikTok even more, so we can just waste more of our time. I'm just kidding. Don't waste time. Create content. Otherwise, just 
do what you love. And it's always better to do what you love because you will have consistency with it. And that is the most important part, whichever one of these platforms you want to use, whichever one of these platforms you want to use, you have to show up and that's it. No rocket science. So how easy it is to create with WISC. As you can see, first of all, you bring in the elements for WISC to analyze and combine. All you're going to do is to drag and drop from your computer, right? The AI is going to do the work and then you can just explore. For examples, as you can see, make the characters eat ice cream. The dinosaur and the cat are high-fiving. Make sure the animal pen is round. Adjust the color scheme to follow a pastel palette. So it should be really easy. It should be fun as well. Then, of course, you will refine what you see if you don't like the results and essentially play with it, practice and make it perfect. How to get money with this? Well, this is my suggestion for you. Whisk is going to be really good for cartoonish elements or animation things. And for example, this channel on YouTube, they did it very well. They do make videos, not pictures, but I'll show you how you can turn your images into pictures, into videos as well by using another tool, which is really, really good. But what these people do is that they make a script about Bible stories. Perhaps this person likes Bible stories or they just saw that Bible stories are doing really well on YouTube. So what do they do? They, as you can see, they create animations and they do with, with AI voiceovers, but they're not putting out a lot of content. As you can see, three weeks ago, three months ago, four months ago, five months ago. So it was like one per month only. And the last couple of months, they're not so consistent. But as you can see, the most popular ones have 2.7 million views. This one has 1.6 million views. So there's millions of views by creating things with AI. And it's not so hard. And have a look at it. The money that they get is really, really good. And honestly, I think this is underestimated because it's way, way more. Probably way, way more. They get at least $8,000 from this channel alone, right? And maybe they do have more channels. Who would know? And the way in which you can turn your pictures into videos is Kling AI. You can just Google for it. Kling AI is one of the best AI tools that I've discovered recently. If you head over and create yourself an account, of course, you can just click on AI videos here, and then it's gonna lead you to the dashboard. What I love about this is that they give you all the knowledge that you need to have in order to create some magic. First of all, text to video here, your usual prompt, but here's Help Center. Now, what Help Center is? Well, it's for people who don't want to deal with prompts. I mean, it's still, you know, for people who don't want to be too technical because they explain everything. As you can see, text to video here, they give you everything. They give you the formula. And the formula is this. So it is prompt equals, first of all, you need a subject. For example, you put a horse there. Then the next element is subject movement. So what is that horse doing? Maybe it's sitting, maybe it's running, maybe it's doing something else. The third element is scene or scene description. So where is that horse located? So let's say, for example, that we have a horse who is running. All right, so horse is running and the scene, let's just say it's going to be desert, right? And of course, you can add some more camera language. You can add some lighting. You can add atmosphere. You can add whatever you like. And you've got it. Everything here. Everything is outlined, right? For example, for subject movement, descriptions of the subject's movement status, including stillness and motion. For example, the scene represents the environment in which the subject is situated, foreground, background, and other elements. And this is how you create the prompts with Kling AI. It's really easy because they outline everything that you need to know, and this is the result. So as you can see, a horse, it's running through the desert. So this is what I did. Have a look at it. So a horse is running through desert, and it's all I did. It's all I did, and as you can see, for example, the legs on this horse are really, really good. 
sometimes, well, most of the times, most of these AI tools, they just give you five legs or six legs, or they just give you a cow's hat on a horse's body. Clink is a different story, and it's really, really powerful. Now, don't waste your money on courses, right? There's a lot of experts on YouTube that just show you something and either they just want to affiliate for someone or they just want to sell you the course. None of these AI tools are complicated. All you got to do is to explore. And there's no experts in this new field. It's a new field. AI is new. Everybody is exploring. So don't waste your money on courses, on educations, whatever. Do it yourself and a lot of doors will open for you. So yeah. Wish you good luck and I'll catch you in the next time. Don't consume too much content, including this video and YouTube. Do something. Catch you later.